So, while the government continues to wrestle with Parliament over what Brexit means, <clears throat> what do the two sides of the argument think of this week's events? And where does that leave their prospective campaigns? I'm joined now by Ian Murray, who's the Labour MP for Edinburgh South, who has been a vocal supporter of the People's Vote campaign, and Alec Neil, SNP MSP for Adrian Schatz, who supported a Leave vote in the referendum. Well, Ian, can we come, Murray, can we come on to what you think in a moment? But I'd just like you to if you would, I know you're not a great supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, but to clarify what Labour's position is, because as I understand it, Labour's position is their first choice is a general election, and in their manifesto they would say they want Brexit but on the the, the six test terms that, that Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell have, have, have laid out, and if they can't get that, they want a referendum but in a referendum they would say vote remain, which seems completely contradictory. Well, I think the three-step process of the Labour conference motion is to vote down the deal, because it doesn't meet, as you say, the six tests. Uh, then it's to call for a general election, which might be very difficult to achieve, and then it's to move on to all other options, including an option of a public vote to remain. Now, uh, the Labour Party will have to come off the fence on that at some point pretty soon, because uh, I think that what they're trying to do might be incompatible with what's available. And that's always been the case. It's a perfectly sensible policy to have, but that's not necessarily the way that a parliament will work in terms but of sequencing or what be available. To say you want a general election in which you campaign for Brexit and if you can't get that you want a, a, a referendum in which you campaign for staying in the, the European Union, that is not exactly a very, very clear message to be giving to the British public. Well, and that's why the, the question has to be asked to the Labour leadership in terms of what that actually means in terms of the public because the key question here is that in the event that a general election would be available, two things would have to happen. Article 50 would have to be extended because that could, process couldn't happen between now and the 29th of March and secondly what would be in a Labour manifesto and if you look at the Labour conference motion you would see that probably given the third leg of the, the motion is to uh, campaign to remain in a people's vote that would probably look as if it would have to be in the manifesto so there's a slight confusion about that which is why I've always thought that let's get this back to the people and give have a people's vote on the deal versus remain and that would be the best and easiest way to aff affirm whether or not the public still want to go down this route. Um, uh, well Alec Neil, what do you think should happen because Parliament seems to be in an impasse, isn't it? I mean, uh, Parliament is not in favour of no deal, but it's not in favour of the deal. No, it's a complete log jam, actually, a complete impasse. And, you know, Amber Rudd is right in the sense that uh, people should try to come together in Parliament and get a way forward. The problem has been Theresa May. She's refused to work with anyone outside. She hasn't even been working with her own cabinet, never mind working with other parties. And I think she's a blockage to trying to make progress across the country. So what do you think should happen? What would be your preferred option? I think the current deal is just totally unacceptable. I mean, it doesn't satisfy the Remain campaign. It doesn't satisfy the Brexiteers. Uh, it's the worst of all possible worlds. So I think be, what, what I think should happen now is that uh, we should move forward to looking at a completely new uh, deal with the EU that actually implements Brexit. Because at the end of the day, you find either down on the side of Remain or on the side of Leave. This is neither fish nor fowl, and therefore it's got no chance of getting through the House of Commons, and it's certainly got no chance of winning a referendum, no matter what the question is, if that's on the ballot paper. Okay. So there has so, to be so some on. attempt to get a middle way. Now, my own, my own view <coughs> is that that probably lies in relation to an arrangement around something like the European Economic Area, uh, plus or minus. It might not be a case of us joining it, but it might be something around that, because I think that's where m most people would accept a compromise. Okay. <coughs> people on both ends who are too extreme to accept a compromise, but I I think if there's a compromise at a UK level, it's around the European economic okay. area. But you would agree with Ian Murray on one thing, which is that for what you're suggesting, you would need to postpone Article 50. Oh, absolutely, because uh, if we keep going the way we're going, we're going to end up with this terrible deal or no deal, neither of which is what people want. But, Gordon, can I just pick Alec up on this? Because Alec voted Leave, and this is the key problem with the Leave campaign and why we're currently in this mess. Alec says the current deal is the worst of all worlds. I agree with him on that, but he can't tell us what he would want as a Leaver, apart from saying he might want EEA, which is actually a closer relationship uh, to the EU than the current uh, deal okay, that's on the I, table, I, and that's part of the but, problem. But, 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 before you reply to that, Alec Neil, what I wanted to ask you, Ian Murray, is you want a referendum, but it's as difficult to see 
how Parliament gets to voting for another referendum as it is to see how it gets to voting for what Alec Neil is suggesting. Well, we have to get a vote full stop. I mean, the first stage of that is to get this back to Parliament, which should have come back next week to Parliament now that the uh, Prime Minister will be coming back from the European Council, as we all expected, empty-handed. Get the deal voted down, and then, of course, the legislation kicks in that Parliament should take control of this process. And I think there's two things that will happen in, in Parliament at the moment. There's a majority of MPs that would stop a no-deal scenario from happening, so that would be taken off the table. And I think we can get a majority around a people's vote because we need to try and break the impasse but who between will now give and the 29th you that majority? I mean, Jeremy Corbyn doesn't seem very keen on it. The SNP would, would support it. Um, uh, the Conservatives, no. So where, where is this majority for a people's vote? Well, you say Conservatives, no. There's a growing number of Conservative backbenchers and it's not just the usual um, people that are doing this in terms of supporting a people's vote. We've got Guito Beb, who's uh, supporting it. Joe Johnson's come on board recently. There's a growing number of Conservative MPs. So we do need to get the Labour front bench into a position of a people's vote. And if we can do that, I think we can con command a majority in the House. And I think that's the best way to go. Look, we all have to ask ourselves why we came into politics. I didn't come into politics to meet my constituents in the country poorer and therefore given what's on the table is the worst of all worlds and given there's an impasse in Parliament the public should be brought back okay. into this process democratically. Well, Alec Neil, the obvious objection to, to what you're saying is that it would probably in any variant of, of it involve keeping free movement of Labour and so uh, arguably people who voted Leave could say, well, that does, that's Bino as it's called, Brexit in name only, so that you, your proposal is actually <laughs> no nearer to, to delivering and what most people think Brexit should involve than any other. I actually have no problem with free movement of labour because actually the Scottish economy needs free movement no, no, of no, labour. The point, I understand you don't have a problem, but, but, but many people who voted leave did. I'm not saying we should join the exist. I'm not saying we should conjoin the existing EEA because that would not be acceptable to me, let alone the Brexiteers, because she's made free movement abolition of a key part of the negotiation. What I'm saying is an arrangement similar to the EEA, but it would need to be amended, obviously, at a British level because free movement isn't acceptable uh, to the House of Commons, including Labour. Um, well, Ian Murray, is anything happening behind the scenes? I mean, you've outlined how you would like to uh, form a parliamentary majority in favour of another referendum. Are you having talks with anyone? Is there anything going on, even unofficially, to try to create, in practical terms, such a parliamentary majority? Well, actually, all we're doing at Parliament at the moment is trying to have talks with others, and we're doing what the Prime Minister should have done 18 months ago and try and build a cross-party consensus around something that people might uh, want to try and vote for. And given there's an impasse in Parliament, I think that's the right thing to do. And we've actually been quite successful at pr providing that kind of coalition already. We've won a few votes in the House of Commons chamber, and indeed the the very fact we're having a meaningful vote is because we all worked hard to try and get Conservative backbenchers coalesced around the meaningful vote amendment just a year ago. So we're working cross-party all the time and I think the Prime Minister needs to come back from the European Council this week, come to the House of Commons on Monday, make the statement about the European Council and then reach out because while she's enthralled with the right wing of her party and while she's trying to respond to their needs rather than the needs of the country or the needs of Parliament, we're going to be in this but, dreadful but you position. Say, but you just... say reach out. Do you think that Labour should table a motion of no confidence in her or in the government, you seem to be suggesting that's not a good idea. Well, Sammy Wilson, the uh, DUP spokesperson um, yesterday, tweeted out and said repeatedly on television that uh, they will support the confidence supply motion with regards to uh, the government, the current government, uh, unless the deal goes through. The deal's not going to go through, so I think we can dispense with the fact that we might be very difficult to get a majority of no okay. confidence All in right. any general election. But can I just very, very briefly say, uh, this is part of the problem. Alec Neil has talked about the EEA three times now, <laughs> including keeping freedom of movement. And this is the problem we've got. The Leave campaign have absolutely no idea what Brexit should look like. Okay. And because of that, we're in well, this if impasse. I'm, if, I, if I'm allowed to get a word in edgeways, can I first of all say about the referendum, Gordon? The referendum can only... Ha There's no chance of a referendum being organised before the 29th of March. So it would require the unanimous approval of the European Union member countries to uh, extend Article 50, number one. Number two, the people's vote itself can't even agree on the question. And number three, it won't actually happen at least until the tail end of next year. That means the country has to go through another year of okay. total uncertainty. Right. That's out, not the answer. We're out of time. Thank you both very much indeed, Ian Murray and Alec Neil.